class. Today is another day full of fun and learning and I am Teacher Ellen and I will be guiding you in our lesson in health. But before we start, let us have a short prayer. Lord God, thank you so much for giving us another day to study and prepare for a good life in the future. Thank you for giving us the chance to continue learning amidst the pandemic which caused a lot of changes in our lives. Bless our parents who work hard to support us. Bless our teachers who are doing their best to inspire and guide us especially in these trying times. Bless our country and the people who continue fighting to stop the pandemic. Lord, fill us with your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Give us good memory so that we might understand and remember what we are going to study now. These we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Again, good morning, but before we start, let me read a letter from a friend named Amber. Hi friend, it's me, Amber. My family was not here because I was quarantined, so they are not with me today. I will tell you what happened. It was last month when I developed the following symptoms. My family quarantined me in one of our rooms as per the instructions of our doctor. Well, it got worse that's why my parents decided to bring me to the nearest hospital. The hospital staff were notified early about my symptoms. That is why when I met them, they're wearing full personal protective equipment and advised my parents to also quarantine at home. I was put in a quarantine facility. I was so scared since I was left alone. I have no one to talk to during that time. The doctor says I need to rest. Well, the doctor confirmed that I acquired coronavirus. The reason why we are at home and cannot go out right now. What did I do when I got it? You ask? You see, Months before when I got sick, my friends and I decided to go out and meet. It's been months since last we see each other. Honestly, if I know I will get sick because of that, I will not go out anymore. We met at our friend's house. We had small party just for all of us. And because it's a party, we didn't wear face masks or anything that could prevent us from getting the virus. We didn't know that one of our friends is sick during that time. That friend didn't say anything to us, so we still continue to party like everything is okay. Few days after that party, I developed symptoms of coronavirus. It scared me just like what they told us in the news. Luckily, few days after my symptoms, I got better and the doctor told me that I am free from the virus. But still, I need to quarantine myself to be sure. Why did I share Amber's story, you ask? Well, it is related to our lesson for today. Let me introduce to you the concept of communicable diseases. Our learning objective is to demonstrate the self-monitoring skills to prevent communicable diseases. What is communicable disease? Communicable disease is a disease that can be transmitted or spread from one person to another or animal to another. It is also called the infectious disease like athlete's foot, chicken pox, to severe cases like coronavirus. A communicable disease is caused by pathogen or disease agents that enters the body through direct or indirect contact. The following are the common pathogens, virus, bacteria, fungi, and parasites. Let's learn the difference of them. Viruses are very tiny organisms smaller than bacteria. They cause disease not only to humans but also to animals and plants. Virus needs a living host. They cannot grow if they are not inside a living cell. When they are in a human cell, they increase fast and cause diseases. Next is bacteria. 
Bacteria is very tiny, single-celled living things that are found almost everywhere. They can be seen under a microscope. Some bacteria are dangerous because they cause diseases. Other bacteria may be useful. They can help in making things rot and eat fermentation. Next is fungi. Fungi are living things that are not animals or plants. They are almost everywhere. They even grow in human skin. This includes seeds and molds as well as the mushrooms. Last is parasites. Parasites are organisms that live in another organism called a host. Parasites are living things that get their food in other living things. There are parasites that are big enough to be seen by the naked eye. Did you know that these pathogens are only part of the factor of a communicable disease? To understand further, you need to remember the chain of infection and how you will break it. Let's start with pathogen. Since you know that pathogen can be present in the things that you use every day and share with other people, make sure that you and your family or community are able to sterilize or disinfect these things. Frequent cleaning of surfaces, toys, and furniture are a proactive way of preventing and controlling the spread of diseases because it stops them before they even become present. Since humans and animals can be the source or carrier of a disease, they should be given diagnosis and proper treatment. Maintaining a sanitary environment is likewise the key to eliminate other reservoirs like food, water, and other infectious things or materials. Some of the way to break the chain of infection through portal of exit is applying cold, flu, and cup etiquette such as coughing and sneezing on your elbow instead of your hand. Proper hand washing and throwing of used tissue in the trash can should also be observed. You may also ask to be excused for a while so that you can blow your nose, sneeze, or cough. If you still do not feel well, your doctor or family will decide if it is safer for you to stay at home instead. Avoid the spread of disease by maintaining the proper personal, food, environmental hygiene. There are various ways that can be done by avoiding unhygienic practices like biting your nails, picking your nose, not wearing slippers, playing in the flood waters, and sharing personal belongings. Instead, take a bath, wear clean clothes and slipper, observe proper hand washing, make sure food safety is observed and applied. Have you noticed healthcare professional is using protective clothing like surgical gowns, safety goggles, gloves, and mask. Wearing these helps them in their work. It prevents the body fluids, blood, mucus, and other forms of contaminations from entering their body when they are taking care of sick people. Notice that even after they use their protective clothing, they still wash their hands thoroughly. See the importance? If we follow these ways on how to protect our body from pathogen, or any kind of infections, these pathogens can be prevented in going inside in our body. Anyone can be a susceptible host. To protect yourself from these contagious diseases, you need to practice good personal hygiene and environmental sanitation as mentioned in the previous example of breaking the chain of infection. Added to these are vaccination, proper nutrition, enough sleep, and regular exercise. Vaccines triggers the body's immune system to produce protective substances called antibodies. To further boost your immune system, eat only safe and nutritious food. This will surely provide you with the energy you need, promote growth tissue, and regulate body functions. Having 8 hours of sleep is also important. Think your body as a battery. You need to recharge so that you can rest after all the hard work for the day. Be sure to make time for regular exercise. When you exercise, you keep your bones and muscles strong, especially your heart, so you're able to breathe easier. Exercise also help you avoid getting injured or sick. 
It keeps your mind alert. When you exercise, you're always active and enthusiastic. It is good to know the different ways on how to prevent diseases at an early age. However, it is best to understand that this requires continuous awareness and application because common communicable diseases happen even in adults. Let's see if you understand the ways to prevent the spread of disease by answering the following questions. Know what you see. Direction. Read the situation at the middle column. Write the action that you should do or not do in the given column. I will give you 20 seconds to answer. A few moments later. Great job, students! I will give you five clubs. For your assignment, please do the following. That's all for today, and I want you to stay safe, home, healthy. See ya!